So it seems the time has come for mainstream media critics to admit that The Little Mermaid was a flop, a big box office flop. And I think we're seeing this in some outlets, specifically with Collider, that you're even having these positive headlines, but they have to admit within the article itself that it's just not making the money. It's not going to reach its break even point and it may lose money in the in the worst case scenario. And probably the probably the best case scenario is that it just breaks even. So we're getting these articles popping up that are kind of easing up into that thought that this movie just isn't performing well even domestically is doing okay but not enough where it can offset the international bomb it is in uh, places like south korea china uh france and other uh, locales are just not uh i guess uh, identifying with this film and are just not enjoying it as much as uh, the domestic audience i know the domestic audience i think is are they're carrying the film to a certain extent to uh, an, an almost break-even point but the international audience is just not interested in this film it's something i I've been saying something a lot of people have been saying you know, just looking at the numbers and its performance and uh, ignoring the the criticisms of racism something you you can't even pull up uh, you can't even use as, a, as an excuse nowadays because you have uh, films like uh, Across the Spider-Verse doing excellent you have films like Transformers Rise of the Beast with a Spanish uh, focus uh, for the main characters uh, doing amazing D- made it, making over 60 million dollars in its opening uh, one of the best uh, Transformers films that have come out recently so these, there are films that are successful with the, these different cultural leads. And I don't think you can use that as, as an excuse anymore that oh, this audience is racist. People are just just don't like your product. And I think that's the case for The Little Mermaid, at least internationally. Domestically, it seems like it has a small fan base that can carry it to, uh, I guess, some uh, minor successes. But it's not enough to, to carry it to a profit. So let's read this article, see what they have to say. Uh, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. And let's see the their positive spin on bad news. The Little Mermaid sales passed new milestone at the global box office. Of course, every, every movie is breaking a milestone nowadays just for the headlines. The movie is swimming along the domestic box office but struggling to stay afloat overseas. Okay, here are the, the bad uh, intonations there. Is The Little Mermaid a hit or not? The answer changes with each new layer of context that you bring to the table. On the face of it, the fact that Disney's live-action remake of the classic 1989 animated film has now passed the $400 million mark globally is worth celebrating. It's a large number. But when you consider the more than half of that has come from domestic theaters, the achievement loses some of its value. And then when you take into account that the movie costs a reported $250 million to produce minus marketing... That $400 million number doesn't look so special after all. The rule of thumb is that the movie of the size ne- of that of this size needs to gross twice its budget in theaters to break even, which means that The Little Mermaid after two full weeks of release is still in the red, and it's currently pacing to conclude its global box office run around $500 million, which would barely put it in the cl- into the clear, which is kind of a lie from this article. It wouldn't put it into the clear. So we're we're seeing uh, uh the production cost is two hundred fifty mil- million dollars. You add the uh, marketing cost is going to add to about around double of that. So it's around five hundred million dollars uh, break even point. You have to actually add the splits as well between the theaters and the the uh, the movie studios. So the, the for each ticket sold, the the uh, the movie studios are getting sixty percent. Theaters are getting forty percent. That's even lower globally or internationally where it's uh, around 40 40 to 30 uh, percent the the studios get and the theaters get around 50 60 percent so if you add to that it had to, in order for this film to break even it has to go like 650 million dollars total worldwide globally for it to actually break even and start making a profit so if it's if it's predicted to just barely make it to 500 million dollars it's probably gonna lose like 150 million dollars in, in in spent costs and everything everything like that so this is some of that deception in this article trying to make it sound like it's not too bad it's situation it didn't lose money but yes it's definitely losing money and i think that's something we're seeing in a lot of news articles recently people are trying to ease us into this the failure of this film and i think we're getting a a reasonable response finally to some extent that yeah this movie's failing but of course they're going to still blame racism we know that's uh, the main focus but like i mentioned before i don't know if you can really say it's racism 
racism when you have two you have two movies that have uh, different prominent uh, people of different colors and races making money. You have even before that you have a uh, Fast X making money with Vin Diesel and his multi multicultural family. You have Across the Spider Verse with an interracial couple, uh, 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 Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy. You have a uh, Transformers: Rise of the Beast. You have a uh, with the Spanish Hispanic f- uh, focus. Uh, you have these movies with different cultures making money and, and they're not complaining. So I don't know how much you can accuse racism. I think you can accuse fandom uh, in general for, for the loss because you didn't listen to the fans. The fans want the, the aerial that they wanted, that they remember, that they're nostalgic about. And this these remakes are about nostalgia. And you're you removing the, the entire nostalgia from the film itself, uh, that kills the film to a certain extent. And I think... I think that's the problem with the production of The Little Mermaid. It seems like something that wasn't born from creating something nostalgic with something born sort of from hatred itself, I would say. I know that's a strong word, but it's, it's from when you if you listen to the writers, the producers, they say we hate that the Ariel was like this. You know, she was in this weak position. We want to make her a strong feminist icon or something like that. So we hate this aspect of her. So we're ch- changing this. Uh, where she she doesn't fall uh, she doesn't f- fall in love with uh, the prince the prince falls in love with her and pursues him pursues her and uh, the the prince doesn't save her she's strong he can do it by herself uh, so so she saves herself the prince is just there he, he gets rescued and I think they 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 born a lot of the the part the aspects that they changed from the film some of the songs this was born out of the hatred of what the, what happened or what occurred in 1989 so you can see that hatred in some of the things that they they change and i think people don't respond to that really well when they're looking for something nostalgic of of the things they saw uh, in 1989 not something born of hatred of what was produced in 1989 i think that's a problem with some of these disney remakes some of them are just born out of pure hatred Uh, i think uh, wendy is uh, peter pan and wendy is one of the things where just everything that that made Peter Pan who he was was removed and given to someone else, Wendy or or, or Tinker Bell or something. It was born out of hatred of, of of Peter Pan being something people like to see. So it just feels like with these type of films won't be successful. And I think uh, this is one of the clearest examples of that. Anyways, leave your comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, do you think the mainstream media is finally coming to terms with this failure? And if they are, do you think they'll change the narrative on it being pure racism? I don't think so but you tell me catch you next time